Hey, this is Dustin Perry from Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International, and you're watching The Search, Existence Unknown. test. My name is Chris Maggard, and I'm on a personal mission to find the truth. Hello? I'm joined by my good friends Patrick Shields. Did you just say something? Bullshit. Jake Stock. I feel like someone's touching my neck. What? I feel like someone's touching my neck. And Rick White. I got it right at this area right here. Together, we explore claims of supernatural activity. No matter what we encounter, we will continue our search for the existence unknown. From 60 days from now, this place will be leveled. Um, the claims that are being told to us is amazing. Um, this is a first time for TSP and for the show The Search to investigate a church of this magnitude, a monastery for nuns only. Uh, it's an honor for us to be here. If you guys see something that we don't see, contact us, tspnorthernkentucky.com, or hit us on Twitter. So here we go. Another exciting location for the search, existence unknown. Let's rock this place. We're here at this undisclosed location, this monastery. The crazy thing is that the women that were here, the nuns that took the vow of silence. The communication they would even have with each other was through prayer. prayer or through some type of um, religious chanting or something like that. Yeah. And and part of me wonders if they aren't leaving because they all want to stay together. Well, yeah, the whole backyard, because it was a cloistered monastery, monastery has um, a very, very large, what's the, I don't know, high there, 10 foot? I don't know, the, the wall, there's a wall all the way around. Okay. The they were not allowed to talk to the outside world. Here next to me, we have a 20 foot wall. They could not go outside that wall. No one could come in. They stayed here until they died. This area we're in right now, 13 nuns were buried. The only way we knew about this is the owner of this building found the grave markers. What are these? These are grave markers. No way. Hey, we found them about five inches underneath the soil. They were all in this area. I went and looked online. Why did they put grave markers? I guess where they're going to place the headstones. Gotcha. They didn't have any headstones. They didn't? No. According to Sister Mary Comer, they were lined up right here. No headstones. Just this. A marker. For the 13 nuns. That died here. Never talked to the outside world. The only way they communicated with each other is through prayer. The only thing we have left to show that they were here. We're going up to the upper level where the nuns um, had most access to uh, 
the whole entire second floor. I'll show you the part they didn't access. Um, but they lived up here. These were their bedrooms. Okay. And they were cloister nuns, so they didn't have any um, connection to the outside world at all. Right. You know, from what I understand, the only reason why they had to leave, if they had to leave, for medical reasons? Mm -hmm. It was an emergency? And I think it was an emergency. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, now where we're at right now, <clears throat> this is the dorm for the nuns, the nuns that took the vow of silence. They were not allowed to talk to anybody outside of this area. They have turnstiles in here. If they wanted to get their food or their clothes being washed, they put it in a turnstile. This area um, was considered the nuns' territory. They could walk through here. Um, this hallway back here was cut off, that was public. Um, they would, there are things here, I don't know what you call these, roundabout turns, they would pass things through. But, you know, this is, so you would put something here and you could pass it to the other side or vice versa. So there was wow. no contact. So this is their living quarter. These rooms look smaller than a prison cell. What does that do to the mind? Being stuck in here for years in a vow of silence, not talking to each other, only through prayer. One claim we've had is a room over here, number 214. The light ended up turning off by itself and, and they saw it happen, I mean, I didn't touch it. And so I turned it back on right away and there was an indent of like a body shape on the bed, like the head, really? the pillow, yeah. And, and as we walked down this way, all of the beds had Bibles on them. Mm -hmm. And then as we came in, the beds were all made very neatly. As we walked back down together, we peeked in and several of the rooms, the Bibles were moved and the covers were rumpled that same way with a definite impression on the pillows. And, and we checked our watches and it happened right at 10. So at we were 10. thinking- Is that in the morning or at night? At night. So we were thinking, you know, cloistered nuns probably had a very rigid schedule. It was probably very the same, you know, very much the same every day. And our best guess was 10 o'clock is bedtime, and we were in their way at bedtime. There's a lot of rooms here, very narrow, very small. And these women, these nuns that took that vow of silence, stayed here for 20 some years. It's wild. Um, why do you think something of holiness like a nun? women of God, why would their energy be still here? Um, my personal belief, my personal opinion is that being that they were cloistered nuns, this was all they knew. Um, when they passed away here of natural causes or sickness or what, whatever may have happened, they were even buried on the property and were later excavated, which I think kind of stirred things up probably a lot then. Um, there were 13 nuns buried here and all 13 were excavated and moved. Um, I think activity picked up a lot when that okay. happened. Um, the bottom line is just, I don't think. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. But it sounded like door opening or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, bro. It was all, that I mean, was way down here, dude. It was. I was like, what the hell was that, dude? This place is solid, too, man. <laughs> Did you run to the wall? No, I got shot. <laughs> I just felt a very strong smell in there. I smelled too. Can I ask you what scent you smelled? Like old perfume. Old, old, old women, no, old perfume. Like saying all night. That's what we've, that's what we've always said. It's like an old Ooh, floral strong perfume. Yeah. You'll get wafts of that sort of all over the building. Yo! Almost like baby powder. Almost like old baby powder, yeah. Yeah, old baby, like an old diaper pail. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna go take her idea. Uh, I don't even know what time it is right now. Six, almost six fifteen, six ten. Oh, okay, any time. So we're now what we're gonna do? We're gonna take her suggestion. We're gonna put Bibles on all these beds. Man, I feel like we're ten, we're playing with fire right now. I'm not especially saying GD in here. Good job that? on that one. I'm not yeah. saying it. Good day. I'm not, yeah, good, good day. day. Mm -hmm. Good day. Good <laughs> <laughs> day. Guys, I want you to meet a very good friend of mine. He was actually with 
one of the original members of TSP. He was there from the, pretty much from the get-go. Um, Steve had an experience when we investigated a place down in uh, Augusta, Kentucky. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about it, but um, it took a lot of work to help him with an attachment to uh, help his family. And uh, it's been quite a few years since Steve and I set four as of today. Yeah, four as four as of today. It's a set to get our feet together in a, four in a location. Four years, literally today. Yeah, well, not literally. Today, oh, I thought. Okay. But it's been four it's years. Awesome. Yeah, wow. this month. So, uh, wow, milestone. And brother, uh, it's an honor to have you here, man. And I love you and I miss you. And I'm glad you're here. You and Liz. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we went through a lot for a while there, man. And, yeah. We did. It's all and good. Uh, brother, thank you for coming, man. Absolutely. Liz, come here, baby girl. Thank you for coming. You're welcome, sweetie. And the tall, dark stranger in the corner. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up the Bibles. Uh, so we'll all get together and do that real quick. Where's the Bibles at? That's at the end of the hallway on the floor. and uh, the nuns would attend mass. They would be here. They would sing in mass and participate in mass. Um, this wall right here was not part of the original building. Uh, it was added later after they sold it. Uh, you can see the stairs would go up to a common altar that's on the other side now going into the sanctuary where the public would attend mass. That opening was the only connection they had to the outside world. Making the commitment to be a cloistered nun is a huge commitment. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, for, and we have walled off their only connection to society and humanity. Wow. This is where most of the are buried, right outside there, right out here. Yeah. Yeah, this is where most of the are buried. I know that there's the altar at the end. Matter of fact, I was out, I'll show you. I found the grave markers. I used a metal detector and we found about five inches under all the grave markers. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I left them out there for you guys to see. That's awesome. Nice. That's awesome. And this, it, the, the building is a U. Uh -huh. and this is a tunnel that they used to walk without going outside. So, underground tunnel. Wow. We're coming over to show that we're going to be able to get that door to the ceiling. So, this is it right here. Here's the door that we're going to tear down. Um, Pat, uh, this is the door right here, man. That's sealed. Um, and why is that, Pat? Why is in churches like this or monasteries? Well, the only thing I could find through my research was there was only two reasons. One, there was a sacrilegious act that happened in that room, which they would just totally uh, block it off from ever entering again. Or a higher up in the church, like a bishop or somebody, would die in the room in which they'd seal it off out of respect. Right. And this was from what uh, Mike told us, this was the caretaker's room. So... Well, we're gonna find out, because we're gonna tear this door down. The answers are probably inside. This was a prayer area. Like a, a, a cloistered prayer area. They had a meal station here, and this was done, all done in private. We could do that candle. It was right over that corner. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, you want to light it or you want to? I want to do an experiment. I've been wanting to do an experiment. It's lighting up at the door. Comedian. So what we're going to do, we're going to go old-fashioned paranormal researching here. Obviously, right now, Jake and Pat, you can contest to this. There is no airflow in this room whatsoever. Yes, there's none. I mean, Pat, come in here, bro. It's stuffy, it's hot. Yeah, you can feel it. It seals real well. Look how still that is. We're gonna light this candle. And we're gonna let it go. And if anything happens in here, let's see if they'll blow that candle out. Again, this room is solid. This whole building is solid, man. So we'll see what happens. 
if there is anybody here or any residual energy that can hear us and understand us, I lit this candle for you to blow out. So we're going to walk out of this room. We'll come back and check on it later to see if you actually or somebody actually blew this out. Brother, here you go. See what happens. A friend of ours has a, a buddy of theirs that bought this place and it's going to be torn down in 60 days. The accounts of activity, the reports, it was insane. Um, but this investigation is a one-time thing, and it's ours for two days. After that, this place will be gone. So, uh, it's on tonight, bro. It's on to you. This is the only time that anybody will ever be able to investigate this monastery, this place of holiness, where these nuns lived, lived in prayer with communication to God. What we would experience the next two nights will be truly shocking. These nuns were not allowed to communicate with the outside world. Could it be that the fact that since we are coming in here trying to communicate with them, that their connection to this place was so strong? so isolated from the outside world that their energy is still imprinted within the walls of this monastery. Again, what we find out is truly amazing. We would set up different static cams to cover this large facility. We would set up one static cam in the prayer chapel room, one in the basement next to the room that is sealed, one in the nun's dorm rooms, and one in the basement where the nuns would pass from one side of the monastery to the other. Okay, what we're going to do right now is a tone test. tone test we heard what sounded like dragging or sliding coming from the balcony right above us so what we decided is to ask Pat to go up there to see if he could find out where this was coming from
No, it was the door. With everyone being accounted for in the prayer chapel and Pat on the second tier, we captured the sound of another door closing, which this would become a reoccurrence throughout the next two days. Is that you, Pat? Is that you, Pat? No, it was the door. Is that you, Pat? No, it was the door. That sound is our room. How was that door over here? That's behind you. Yeah. And yet again, we capture another sound of a door closing, this time from the hallway near Pat upstairs. Again, we cannot find out who is doing this or why it's happening or where it's coming from, but we do know that everybody that's with us is accounted for in the prayer chapel room. decided to go investigate where the sound of the door came from. When he went into the back stairs, you can slightly hear what sounds like a woman saying something. Hello? right in the middle of the floor facing the doorway. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. I think that might have been the noise we heard. So what we're doing right now, during the tone test, we heard what sounded like a chair moving upstairs. Uh, Jake and Pat are going to review their cameras and see if we can uh, document where the chair was before. After going over all the video we had, we couldn't tell where the chair was originally to tell if it was moved or not. But however, we did verify that it was a very similar sound to what we all heard originally, like the chair was sliding. All right, we're gonna try it one more time. Are you ready, Pat? Yep. Again, we hear a second door close, even closer to Pat than the first time.
Was that up there? Was that up there? After the second shepherd's tone test, I captured what I think I heard with my own ears is a male's voice. I ran out to the main entrance of this monastery to make sure no one came in and there was no one else that walked in this building. So what we captured was generally unexplained and shocking. Was you here before this church was here, or this monastery? Was you here before this church was here, or this monastery? Was you here before this church was here, or this monastery? No explanation to where the mysterious male's voice came from because this was a church for only women, a monastery for only women. We decided to end our session here in the chapel room and head downstairs to the room that was sealed. And yeah, this was my time to take out a little aggression on that door and break it down. What we're going to do now, we're going to bust open this door. Uh, the owner has given us permission because the building is going to be down in 60 days. But we need to know what's behind it. And the rumors behind why they would seal the door in the monastery is either for sinful reasons or respect. So we're about to find out. Let's see if my weak little self can bust this door. I feel like I'm too close. You think so? What? No, I hear you. Here's Johnny. Oh. Sorry. Had to do it. Break it. Tucky lost. Yeah. Yeah, hold it open while squeezing. Ready? Spider webs. Is this for real closet? That's it? No. Does it really? So there's a room. Oh, wow. There's doors in the closet. Yeah, that's what I thought. No wonder it ain't going nowhere. What? There's a bar right behind it. Is that a secret door or something, dude? <sighs> Come in, man. Bring that sledgehammer with you. All right, you guys stand back for a minute. Yeah. Everyone stay back. Knock this board off. There you go. All right, now push that door open. There you go. We should be able to get it now. It's yeah. hot as hell in here. Yeah. Let's find out why. This thing. Breathe in with your hot. nose. Look at that cock, dude. Breathe in with your nose. Huh? Breathe in with your nose. After breaking the door down, we discovered that this room was used for a student who went to Harvard. With no explanation to where this student came from or if he had permission to stay at this monastery, we decided to gather back up and head up to the top floor where we had all of our equipment laid out while Pat, Lindsay, and Elizabeth would go up to the nun's dorm to see if any of the Bibles that we placed earlier have been moved or any pillows were indented like Lindsay stated before. Ladies, we came back up here to talk to you.
there's just too many people. I don't know if you heard me correctly, about 58, 59 days, this place is going to get torn down. While Pat, Lindsay, and Elizabeth were upstairs conducting a small investigation, looking to see if anything was moved, what they heard, what sounds like piano notes, and the only piano in the monastery is located in the chapel. And after reviewing the chapel footage, no one played that piano the whole night. Is that someone's stomach? Mm. No? No, my stomach didn't make any stitches. It sounds like a woman saying something very faintly. This next EVP sounds like a woman is actually responding to Elizabeth. Nobody's here to hurt you. Nobody's here to hurt you. Nobody's here to hurt you. Could you say that again louder? This next sound that was captured was the sounds of a loud bang. Maybe another door again. What was that? What was that? What was that? The light ended up turning off by itself, and I, they saw it happen, I mean, I didn't touch it, and so I turned it back on right away, and there was an indent of, like, a body shape on the bed, like the head, really? the pillow, yeah, and, and I just, we just moved it back, and I've re-smoothed it. Smooth it again. That's what it looked like, smooth. What room is this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just walked into this room. After hearing the reports that Pat was telling me that they were experiencing up in the nun's dorm room, all of us decided to go up there. Everybody that was there, including the owner, Lindsay, Elizabeth, Steve, Dana, Pat, and Jake. What happened next is truly amazing. Down the hall. It's the 
secrets from the chapel that we heard of. It's, it's like a... Who's doing that? Is that Pat now? The next sound that I just captured on my voice recorder was definitely shocking. It was just me and Steve down this hallway where everybody sat back behind us in front of the nun's dorm. This what sounds like something was being dragged again and then knocking. Who's doing that? Is that Pat now? Who's doing that? Is that Pat now? Who's doing that? Is that Pat now? Did someone just laugh? Anybody down there? Hello? next EVP that I capture sounds like a woman is saying she's in pain and then we want to but the rest of the words we could not make out did someone just laugh anybody down there Hello? Did someone just laugh? Did someone just laugh? Anybody down there? Hello? I'm telling you, dude, it is insane. All right, this camera's, I gotta change the battery out here in a second, so I'm gonna stop this one right now. He'll tell you.
and we came to tell you you got about 58 days before you have to leave. How do you feel about that? Would we be able to hear them from all the way up here? Just be quiet for a minute, see if we can. Because what I just heard... Pat and Lizzie again decided to go back up to the nun's dorm room by themselves after everybody dispersed down to the main area. What they captured on the voice recorder sounds like a melodic sound, like either humming, changing in three different pitches, or a flute. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? While well, Jake, Pat, and Lindsay were sitting on the top of the stairs towards the nun's dorm room, Pat hears something through his headphones. Him and Jake decided to review this audio to see what they captured, and it kind of sounds like another woman talking. I'm going to go with them. Let's go find out. Chris? Maybe. Hey, Chris? Yeah. Did you guys just make a noise? Like what? Like, ooh! We're just on the stairwell here. And that, that's what we just heard. Okay, what'd you just see, dude? What'd you tell me you saw? Turn my head real quick, look down the, the nun's oh, doors. Right. And uh, it, looked, it looked like I saw like a guy standing there. It's come to find out where he saw practically the same thing, which is really weird, especially the clothing, because it was white. It was weird. Yeah, this is a trip, because I was downstairs, and I thought I saw what looked like um, a guy in a white suit, or a white outfit, right. and it was a tall dude. Yeah. And then I'm just telling you that, and we're comparing notes, and then you're like, Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. No way. No, I swear to God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Seriously, just, dude. The funny thing is, like, I just turned, saw it, and it just, like, disappeared. So I was like, okay, it's my eyes, right? Yeah. I saw the same thing, dude. And it was, like, same same outfit just now? No, oh. down, no, when I was downstairs and they were on the top floor. We were just comparing notes, what we, our experiences, talking about what we just experienced. Super weird. Rick, Derek, and myself will return for the second night for a follow-up. A lot of things within the monastery has been taken down or removed, so now it's even more of an empty shell. This time is officially the last time that this place will ever be investigated. Set up a camera in the main hallway, one in the prayer chapel room, and also utilize the monastery's DVR system. I didn't hear anything.
heck was that? I heard that too. Rick, Derek, and myself would conduct the first part of the investigation in the prayer chapel room, where we successfully before had captured a lot of noises of, like, door slamming. I would ask, why would you stay here? And it sounded like, again, a woman responding, because. Why would you stay here? the heck was that? I heard that. I heard that, too. The heck was that? I heard that too. Why were you scared? The heck was that? I heard that too. Hey, did you hear that, Chris? You hear them bells? I didn't hear you. You hear them bells? What bells? This went off. You mean like outside? Oh, I could have been. But ding, 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 ding. Really? Yeah. Well, I've been one of them church leaders. They don't have anything like that in here today. Not anymore. How loud was it? Oh, I could hear it in my ears. Ending on your session. Let me see if it's on. The hell was that? The crazy thing about this EVP, even though we did capture it on Rick's thermal and one of my voice recorders, we also heard it with our very own ears, making this a disembodied voice. Not Derek, Rick, or myself could explain where this man's voice came from, and we were the only three in this whole building. Yeah. Not anymore. How loud was it? Oh, I could hear it in my ears. Any noise session. Let me see if it's on. The hell was that? Okay. Not anymore. How loud was it? Oh, I could hear it in my ears. Any noise session. Let me see if it's on. What the hell was that? Okay. Not anymore. How loud was it? Oh, I could hear it in my ears. Any noise session. Let me see if it's on. What the hell was that? After Rick, Derek, and myself spent about an hour and a half down in the prayer chapel room and part of the main floor of this monastery, we decided to head up to the second floor by the nun's dorm to see if we can capture anything that was captured the night before. What was that? Fucking fine out here. This next audible sound that we all heard with our very own ears and also captured on our voice recorders was straight up shocking. It sounded like someone was dragging something very heavy or slamming a very heavy door and we could not find any reason or where it came from. Is this more residual sounds like the night before that we are capturing?
Dude. What was that? F I know, dude. Dude. What was that? F I know, dude. Dude, what was that? F the fine out here. This once in a lifetime investigation that we had here at the monastery was truly surprising. Why is it when we come to a location like this, a place of worship, a place of pure holiness, that it still has some type of residual sounds, something still attached to this building, something that we cannot understand. This building no longer stands, and we hope and we pray that the souls that were trapped there have found their way home to their Heavenly Father. We'd like to thank the owner, Mike, and everybody that helped us with this investigation. This has to be one of the most exciting locations that we've ever been to, and it was a true honor to investigate something that no longer stands.